Hello folks, I am Ed Overstreet and welcome to the Night Sky Imaging YouTube channel. Um, PixInsight uh, continues to evolve and uh, they have uh, made some changes to the photometric uh, color calibration tool which personally I, I thought was uh, was really outstanding and uh, they replaced that with uh, what they feel like will be a much more accurate uh, rendering of real color for your stars and your uh, targets, galaxies, nebula. And so this color calibration tool, we're going to call SPCC, but it's the Spectrophotometric Color Calibration Tool. Uh, it's a mouthful. So let's head over to uh, PixInsight and uh, let me just share with you uh, what I have gleaned from reading up on it and applying it to my own images. Okay, we are in PixInsight and I'm going to load um, some data that I just took uh, in the last uh, 48 hours and um, let me widen this to make sure something else that I noticed is going on if you use the weighted batch processing script and it is important that you use this script if you're going to use the new SPCC tool because the weighted batch processing script embeds in the FITS header the RA and DEC coordinates that's going to be fetched by the SPCC tool to do uh, the plate solving. So in the old phot photometric color calibration tool, uh, you had to either manually add the RA and DEC, or you could go online and fetch it, or you could download the APAS catalogs and, uh, and, and you could uh, much quickly plate solve your image, but plate solving was up to you with the new SPCC and provided you have used the weighted batch processing script, then your image should have that information embedded in the FITS header and that will be read by the SPCC tool, saving you, I think, a very important step. So far, I think it's important. Uh, I noticed though when I ran the latest wait, latest run with weighted batch processing that I had um, two, uh, well I, I actually took some 120 second exposures and some 240 second exposures. I'm going to work with the 120 second exposures, but what uh, I noticed is that it now created an auto cropped version. And when I compared the two, it has actually cropped out the stacking artifacts for me. So I no longer have to do that. And I think that's pretty cool. Uh, any step saving uh, addition is welcomed by me. But if you want more control over the actual cropping of your stacking artifacts, just go ahead then and open the non auto cropped version. And the crop is pretty minor, but you can tell what it has done. Um, and, and I'm impressed with that. It, if for no other reason, uh, it just saves me a step from having to, uh, to do that. So um, let's go ahead. Oh, let me back up. If you're doing narrow band images and you have, you know, your HA03 and S2, this auto crap, auto crap, auto crop, uh, is going to be applied uh, to all three images uh, in the same fashion so that they're, they're, they will be registered. So that's all good. Now let's open up this, the autocrop version. And I'm going to uh, get rid of the... Uh, rejection map and I'm going to stretch this just so that we can see what's going on. 
Um, at this stage of the game, routinely, I'm going to run the background neutralization, which uh, is uh, helpful when you're running the color calibration tool. But uh, the new photometric script, uh, the spect spectro photometric script, SPCC does that for you. So I've already created a process icon for me. And this is for one-shot color cameras. So if you have a, a, a ZWO camera and or uh, a CCD camera, then uh, you can go fetch the right sensor. And all of your ZWO cameras have these uh, Sony sensors. So now uh, it is being suggested suggested in the literature that Pix Insight is providing that you do two things that you drizzle all of your one shot color images and uh, we've been talking about that even before the SPCC script was introduced but drizzling brings up a newer algorithm that does a much better job than just the flat weighted batch processing script so even if you just drizzle one time, which means you're not really increasing the size of your file, you're just using the drizzle feature algorithm, then um, you need to do that. And uh, also, what else did they suggest that you do? Always dither, but um, I'll think of it. But there was one other thing they suggested besides drizzling and I'll think of it. We're going to work just right now with the one-shot color camera. Then I'm going to do a video on if you have narrow band images, uh, how you can go ahead and uh, add your narrow band and add the actual band uh, pass information, provided you can get your hands on that. So, uh, and you can, just knowing what your filters are. So um, these are my settings. Uh, let me open it all up. Okay, now that I have it open, these are the settings I'm going to use with one exception. I'm going to find some background. Um, just like I would do if I was doing background neutralization or standard color calibration. Uh, let's zoom in here. I don't want any stars in this background. Let's just pick uh, Boo. Let's just go here. I'm going to click on this little icon and I'm going to take this patch of the sky right there and that's going to be my background. Then I'm going to go and make sure region of interest is clicked and from pre preview I'm going to go out and find this preview and I'm going to add that. So here are the uh, dimensions of my preview. Then all of these others are basically default with one exception. You've got to have this catalog Gaia DR3 SP. So now let's just pause and let's head over to um, Pix Insight and Um, Pix Insight gives you in their new update uh, directions on how to, in fact, I'm going to go down here to uh, this page right here. You're going to need to go to the uh, software distribution page in Pix Insight, and you're going to have this option down here to either install the Gaia small set are the complete set. Now these are large files uh, and the, the small set, if you read about it, is probably going to, is going to include everything that I do in the sky. Uh, but you can uh, download the complete set. And then it goes ahead after you download it and, and shows you how you take the process explorer and you open up Gaia. You can also um, go to, I'll show you how to do it, and then you find the files that you've downloaded. Now they've got the complete set and uh, and you add those files. So this is how you're going to add those files. Um, let me find. 
I'm going to go way down here just a little bit further where I've read all through this. I'm not telling you I understand it all, but um, this is when we get into narrow band. Uh, these are all the filters that you have available and how. Oh, it, this is what I, the other thing besides drizzling one time, they're recommending that you use an IR UV cut filter with all of your ZWO uh, one-shot color cameras. So that means you're going to have to stack if you're, uh, well, not necessarily. If you're using, um, uh, you just need to use a, an IR UV cut filter when you're shooting one-shot color camera. Uh, I'm thinking about the dual band, and in that case, you wouldn't use it. So, okay, and that's what I used, by the way, on my example. So, that being said, let's head back to uh, Pix. And you can also find the Gaia catalog by going to Process and go to Astronomy and click on Gaia. And that will bring up uh, this new release where you uh, select the DR. And this is for the spectrometry photo, uh, photometric. Here, I'm going to trip all over my mouth trying to tongue trying to say this and um, and that's all you do just uh, install those um, if you go to process process Explorer and go down here to star catalogs open that up open up Gaia it'll bring it up as well and then um, you can just uh, search for it you need to click on this wrench and this wrench will open up um, a place where you can go find your files and you just uh, find them on um, wherever you downloaded them, stored them, and, uh, and then load them up and you're done. Now that you have them loaded, then the only thing you have to do, provided you have, most of these are default settings, but since I'm using a ZWO camera, I have a Sony sensor. And so all I do is drag and drop this onto my image and it's so fast in comparison to um, what happened when I ran the photometric calibration. This thing just rips right through it. I'm not even going to pause it. Um, so just bear with me a second. And I don't have a real lightning fast. I've got a seven-year-old iMac 1915 version. Or 2015 version. All right, there we have it. It will give you a graph that I can't read and I don't understand, but uh, I do think having all of your uh, stars along this linear line is important. Um, so uh, I'll try to figure out how to interpret this. Right now, I don't have a clue, but. Um, I have now used this new script, and if I restretch this, um, have a more accurate rendition of the real color, star color, because this script is plate solving your image, searching its catalogs, using the black and the white reference points, and applying the color that these stars actually should reflect. Now, I have to laugh because in, in theory, we're looking at probably as close as we can what the star color of this part of the sky really looks like, I think. But, you know, all of us end up making so many changes as we go through this from... Uh, applying uh, noise reduction, removing gradients, uh, and adding saturation, tweaking curves, that we're actually making changes to color. So at least the baseline, what we're starting from, is the right color. What we do with it after that, I guess they call that artistic something or another. So make sure you... Um, Make sure you uh, 
challenge yourself to use this tool, um, go load the catalogs, go to the website, download the catalogs. I would suggest just the short version at first. Go to your Process Explorer, pull up Gaia, Gaia, or Gaia, or go up to Process Astronomy and pull it up. And then always use the weighted batch processing script. If you don't, then you're going to have to go bring up Image Solver. And, uh, and where is Image Solver at? Image Solver might be a script. I thought it was part of a process. But you'll have to use Image Solver in order to embed those um, photometric uh, um, that information in your in your fits header so that it can plate solve. So, because you notice now in this new tool, it doesn't have a place where you can uh, uh, add the RA in the deck as the old photometric calibration did. Okay, well, folks, that's pretty much it. I don't know what else I could add to it other than uh, go give it a try and hope you have clear skies in your neck of the woods.